Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. Have you ever tried to play daily fantasy and get really frustrated when you realize that you're swimming in a sea of sharks? Guys that are entering hundreds of times a day with multiple fancy analytic lineups with all sorts of computer models? It's really hard to win that way. Well, there's a new app and it's called Draft. It's the first truly mobile fantasy sports app. It allows you to play across all the major sports and with the NBA, you can set up your five player team and play against your friends or against random people for money or for free. It's truly a really great experience. It gets back to the essence of what fantasy sports should be about. So check out the app. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. I know I'm in. Sports fans. Going through Andre Drummond's footage has been quite interesting because, despite his flaws, he is a beast on the court and makes tons of plays. I want you to also go to the website because my man Dakota Schmidt wrote a really great article about Andre Drummond and it has even more details and facts written in a very clear and concise way that will flesh out what's going on on the court. But I also want you to watch the video too because we break down very specifically how he's impacting the game. And once Greg Monroe left, and they were able to institute Stan Van Gundy's spread offense and giving him all that room near the basket, he's been able to make plays. Let's start by looking at his post-up game. He struggled mightily from there, even though there are signs of an improved ability to score down low. In my mind, without question, the best way for him to get his post-ups is exactly how Dwight Howard devastated the opponents in Orlando, setting the ball screen and using his supreme speed and agility to get good position. The quicker he attacks on the catch, the better he is, and this jump hook is his go-to move. He does need to improve on laying wood on the ball handler's defender, but just the threat of the ball screen gets him fantastic position, and that jump hook works in his left hand a bit too. I haven't seen enough of him ducking in from the weak side, and this is something we should see a lot more of as he can use his lateral quickness to seal his defender and we're starting to see him string multiple moves together like this dream shake up and under. The Pistons have been willing to let him isolate for post-ups and it's been interesting to see him learn on the job. His footwork is still unpolished but I've been impressed with how much he has improved his left hand and his touch around the rim. With Stan Van Gundy's system, you can see how he benefits initially with a lot of space when you have shooters spread on the weak side. And there's that go-to jump hook swish. They do like to use Drummond to set a pin down screen and then open up for the post up. This is where we see him face up most often, and while it's a bit awkward, he's able to translate his jump hook into a one-footed floater. Off this pin down, he gets good position, and I prefer to see him rip through to the baseline to finish with power. This looks like a much more natural move for him. But there's a reason why he's ranked so low in post-ups. His footwork isn't always consistent, and you can see how he gets away with the travel when he needed to jump off of one foot and exposes the ball too much. I'd like to see him face up and explode right into a move instead of hesitating for three seconds. Same footwork issue here going to his right, this should be called a travel, but you can see how the footwork carries him out of his jump hook range. He also doesn't fight hard enough for his position, so these misses occur when he's farther away than he wants to be on that jump hook. You can see it here as well, where Bogut is effective sinking way down into the lane, allowing Livingston to get back to harassing the ball handler. I like how Drummond is feeling confident enough to go one-on-one -on -one versus a great defender, but he doesn't exert his power, perhaps for fear of a foul, but as a result, doesn't get close enough to get his pet shot to fall. Drummond has also been very effective as a roll man cutting to the hoop. If the defense decides to hedge against the ball handler, he can roll him right to the rim and take advantage of poor rotations. He's also so athletic that there is no need to be that accurate with lob passes to the rim since he can get up quick, elevate, and slam them home with some real viciousness. Another area where Drummond makes the whole offense better is his putbacks. He is far and away the leader in putback attempts, and this ability has emboldened the Pistons offense to take shots more freely since Drummond has a great chance to put the rebound back in. Let's peek at his on-off numbers for a minute to illustrate this point. One glance and you'll fall off your chair when you see the difference in offensive rating. Clearly, the offense has been directed to be aggressive with their attack since Drummond has such a profound effect at the rim thanks to the spacing Coach Van Gundy's system creates for him. 
The decision making by the ball handler when Drummond sets those ball screens is simplified because of his ability to slip to the rim and tip the ball in with such good touch. You can certainly see it in Reggie Jackson's game as he will get caught in bad positions in the air yet Drummond can swoop in and clean up. And he can take high degree of difficulty shots knowing if he just gets it near the rim there's a great chance the ball is going to make it back into the hoop. Defensively, he is far from elite while patrolling the paint. He does not get that many blocked shots, and the opponent's field goal percentage at the rim ranks him 18th in the league amongst centers. When he is in position already to contest the shot, he does a good job, especially considering how high he can jump. And his quickness into the air helps to contain the pick and roll, then breaks up lobs to his man rolling. While he keeps his hands down too often, you can see how he's getting by on his athletic ability, recovering to affect the shot when other less gifted players would have to rely more on positioning fundamentals. However, there are times he gets a bit lost and doesn't pursue the play whatsoever. He'll be in position when the attack begins, but fades back out of the way, forgetting that the ball is the most important thing. There's also something I noticed about him absorbing contact. He seems to get knocked back quite easily, allowing strong centers to take advantage by getting into his body to create space. I've also caught him reaching in on guards, something he simply shouldn't do at his size. This gets him way out of position, and here's another example of him shying away from the contact and getting burned as a result. And I get upset when I see guards trying to reach in on Steph. You can only imagine how I feel about this. Can you hear me shaking my head? The last piece of the puzzle is his free throw shooting. At 44%, it's a career high for him, and we've seen that shooting more than about 35% neutralizes the threat of Hacka DeAndre. However, it's worthwhile looking at his form to pinpoint what is going on. Right off the bat, I like to see him turn his right foot so it's parallel to the left, allowing better alignment for his hip and elbow to the rim. Next, the transfer of his energy from his legs to his shot is non-existent. That said, lots of NBA guys don't use their legs, but I'd like to see better coordination of his arms moving up into the shot and his waist straightening up. Right now, you can see his back straightens first, then his arms go into the shot. There's no rhythm here. Because his right foot is pointing straight at the rim, his elbow flares way out and it's going to be very difficult to make this shot go straight. So there you have it sports fans, if you want to watch even more footage on Andre Drummond, we have a lot of bonus coverage over on our website. And if you want to watch it and you're outside the US, don't be afraid of our website, just wait a minute or two for it to buffer and I'm pretty sure you're going to get some quality HD footage to you, just be a little patient. Also, you got to check out Dakota Schmidt's article because it has even more information than what I presented here. And if you like this, share it on Twitter, subscribe to our channel, and don't miss our podcast. Read all of our other articles because they're fantastic on our website. I can't encourage you more to spend as much time as you can on B-Ball Breakdown. Our mobile app's coming up really soon as well, and that's going to make it even easier for you to interact with all of our content. You're going to love it. And don't forget, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You win. 